This evening, uh, my message is entitled A Mother's Pain, A Son's Prayer, which was in our Calvary News. But I doubt many of you have read that article. How many read that article? Okay. But it will be different, right? When you hear what I have written. Actually, uh, I was wanting to preach tomorrow's message, which is on a very tough subject called submission. You don't hear about submission in today's generation so much because it's, it's challenging, all right? Not only challenging, uh, sometimes women rise up against it. But I'm not talking only about women submitting, I'm talking about everybody submitting. And I wanted to do that tonight, but I, it was very clear. I saw a picture of myself preaching tonight. I saw a picture of myself preaching uh, tomorrow morning in my prayer. And I was very, uh, it was very clear from the Holy Spirit that I should be preaching on a mother's pain, a son's prayer. Um, it would not. It would not be like the article in the in the Calvary News. Uh, it may be some of it may be the same, but it is on the thought that God answers our prayer and God can change your destiny. Somehow, I felt that tonight there's there could be some of you here who is thinking, "I have this disease and I am going to die with it." But I I tell you tonight, if you will just pray and ask God. God can change your destiny. And some of you are carrying burdens and you need God to help you and you may be giving up on praying. God is a God who answers prayer. So God can turn our curses even to blessings. A son's prayer, a mother's pain. You know, in the first few chapters, first nine chapters of First Chronicles, uh, most of us do not read those nine chapters because they are very tedious. I don't read them also. It's name after name after name. It's a, a, the record of the official family tree of Israel from the time of Adam to the time Israel returned in, from captivity. So you have all the names. But tucked into all these nine chapters of name after name after name, in verses 9 and 10, that the historian who were putting all the family names down correctly, uh, recording it correctly, came these two uh, verses that says, Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called him Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain. Verse 10, And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me. Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand be upon me and you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. And then the Bible continues in one statement, so the Lord granted him what he requested. And this evening, may it be your testimony and my testimony that in our prayer, God granted us what we request tonight. Whatever your request is tonight, if you will pray in faith and sincerity, and you will cry out to God with all your heart, God will grant your request. Now, a brief profile of Jabez. I promise to be short, and I think my foot will help me to be short. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And Saturday evening, people, you have had a long day like I had. And uh, your hearing is also short span, isn't it? Uh, I heard, yeah, very loudly. Okay. <laughs> Jabez caused much pain um, to his mother, as I think as soon as he was conceived. Now, whatever that pain may be, whether it's morning sickness, whatever, just the Bible did not des describe it. But uh, this is what the Bible says, that he caused much pain uh, to his mother. And because of that, his, the, his mother must be per perceiving that this son would be a pain all his life. Um, 
And so what did she call him? She named him Jabez, which means pain. And perhaps she did this to warn everyone that uh, be careful. This boy or this man, as he grew up, he would be a pain to you. And how would you like it? As some of us, uh, we have parents who call, who give us names that we, we wish they didn't, did not give us, isn't it? Uh, not so much in this generation, but my generation. There's a cow, there's artist. <laughs> you know? So uh, the mother called him pain. And you know, for Jabez, every time and somebody called him, it's pain, pain, pain. And so he didn't like this. He didn't want this to be his legacy. He did not want this stigma. He did not want people to call him pain. So, um, and he, I believe, did not want to cause pain. Perhaps he believed that because his mother called him pain, he maybe always would be causing pain to whoever come across his way. So, but you see, when he was named pain, you, you, as you read this very simple scripture, two verses, straight line, straightforward, you, know, you see an excellent attitude. Because he did not blame his mother, he did, what, he did not get angry with his mother for naming him pain and giving him that stigma. But instead, his attitude was so good that he turned to God. He turned to God, the only one who can help him. The only one who can change his destiny if it was me meant to be pain all his life. You know, our attitude is so important. So often, we, when things, bad things happen to us or when we have problems, we are so quick to blame others. We blame this person, we blame this situation. But as a child of God, when circumstances and situations um, come our way, we need to turn to God and have a right attitude. And our attitude will determine our altitude. And uh, I have a long way to go with my attitude. But I, think, I, I thank God that as long as we are alive, God can work on our attitude, right? And our attitude is so important. So what did Jabez do? Jabez turned from blaming people. He turned from anger that he's so angry, my name is pain. He turned from anger, he turned from self-pity. Why is this my destiny? Why am I a pain? But instead, he turned from all this and he turned to the God of Israel. He turned to God who is the one who can change his destiny. And this is a beautiful lesson we can um, glean from Jabez's life. He, all he did was he prayed a very simple heart cry prayer, a prayer from his heart, a prayer that, you know, oh God, only you can help me. I do not want to be called and called pain. And this prayer, what that began, um, this prayer has just four requests that is very simple, and I want to close my message, which will be quite long, uh, with these four points of Jabez's prayer, the four requests, turning the curse of pain into becoming a person of honor. We read, isn't it? Jabez became more honorable than all his brothers. That's what the Bible says. You know, I was, um, oh, I forgot to tell you a Mother's Day story. Never mind, I won't. Since I forgot to begin with the Mother's Day story, and that's all going to be about Mother's Day. The sermon is not about Mother's Day. Anyway, I forgot, but now I got this short illustration about prayer. Jabez's prayer was short, four points, and God answered his prayer and changed his destiny. I heard this uh, a few years, quite a few years ago, uh, that happened in our life group. In one of the live group, they decided, the live group leader decided to have, a, uh, no, after the, uh, the session, they, he decided to group the men into a, for prayer and the ladies for prayer. The, the husbands will all pray and then the wife will all pray. Same prayer request. Within maybe five minutes, within a few minutes, the men finished their prayer. But the women's group was still going on for more than 20 minutes. And after they, they finished, the women turned to the men or to their husbands, the, the, the group of men. How come? Because when they finished their prayer, they found the men already fellowshipping among themselves. So the, the ladies said to the men, how come you all pray so fast? You know? So the men said to the ladies, you see, we tell God our problem. The request that was given to us, we just tell God 
about it, uh, the, our the problems, the request. But you ladies, you tell God about your problems, then you tell God how to answer your problems. Uh, that's why you know, your prayer is so long. And perhaps it's not always true, but it is quite true that men are headliners and women are small prints. Uh, we, when we tell something, when we preach, we go into details, we sidetrack, and then the sermon becomes very long. But like Jabez, but I, we need to learn four points. And then the Bible says God just granted him his request. So the point is, it's not how long we pray. It's not how impressive we pray. It is, you know, how um, our prayer can help God understand God knows. But there, there is room for intercession, for wrong prayer. I'm not saying that. Every time just pray one sentence and say goodbye to God. But uh, today's focus is on just these four requests. Jabez asked God to bless him. The first point is, bless me indeed. Bless me indeed. I sense there was an urgency. God, if you don't bless me, I am doomed. I am going to be pain all my life. So he was open-hearted. He just told God, God, bless me. You know, at first glance, for some spiritually in quote, eh, spiritually minded people, God, bless me, seems and sounds so self, self-centered, isn't it? Bless me. What about blessing him? What about blessing others? But you see, this poor man was in desperation. I can confess to you, this evening when I was worshipping God in songs, my, my prayer, I mean my, my singing was more of a prayer and more of a desperation because I don't want to cave in <laughs> standing here tonight. <clears throat> and so the, the, the singing was more from the heart than other times that sometimes our mind wander. You know, when we are singing a song that we know so well, come on, I'm sure you have done this. Mm? And a, a song that you know so well, you are wondering, uh, this evening after church, what shall I eat? What shall I, you know, where shall we go? But when you have a problem, you are more centered. Correct or not? Look so innocent, sounds like you don't do this. But I, I, I do. So tonight, every song that we sang, I was just me and God. Oh, Lord, I worship you. Help me. Help me to deliver your message. Help me not to be long-winded. So, God, so Jabez just said the word, bless me. It was not self-centered. It was a cry of desperation, a recognition that unless God bless him, he will be doomed for trouble. See, uh, what, what does the Bible mean to be blessed? To be blessed. In, in the biblical sense of the word, we are asking God for his impartation of supernatural favor. God bless me. We, all, we, we often say this statement to one another. I think sometimes could be without exaggeration, sometimes a hundred times a day. God bless you. God bless you. And, and do we really mean it? You know? Uh, but when you really mean God bless me, God bless you, we are asking God's supernatural favor to be upon the individual. When I say, God, please bless me, I'm requesting and asking him for supernatural favor and power. And this supernatural uh, favor comes only to, not just because we say bless me, just because I say bless you, and then God, you know, like, uh, what? A worker in heaven, uh, you say, bless me, and then he say, okay, I will bless this person. No, it comes from a life of obedience. The blessing of God comes only to those who are obedient to him, to those who will live a life that, that is a, a life that pleases him. And um, these blessings come in abundance. You can pronounce it a hundred times. A hundred times God will bless you if you are living right because God is a God of abundance. Uh, Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22 says this, the, blessing, the Lord's blessing is the greatest wealth. All our works adds nothing to it. In the Old King uh, translation, it says, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and adds no sorrow to it. And I've been 
so blessed by this scripture uh, throughout my life that when it is a blessing of God, nobody can rob me from God's blessing. And there is no sorrow that will be added to the blessing of God. So <clears throat> this is our God. He comes, he wants to bless us with the greatest wealth that you will ever see or know. Uh, <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 says this, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every and all spiritual blessings in Christ. The blessing of God comes in Christ Jesus. And like I said, it comes in abundance. The supernatural um, or divine favor of God will enable us to rise above all circumstances and take on all challenges. God does not bless us for nothing. God always blesses us with a purpose. And, and blessed people live very challenging lives. That's why this evening, I think all of us need to pray, God bless me, bless me. Because there are so many challenges in our life. For example, Mary, the mother of Jesus, when the angel approached her, the angel declared that you are highly favored in the old uh, translation, you are greatly blessed. You are the most blessed amongst women. And what happens to Mary? Yes, today we look back and we say, wow, Mary is so privileged to be the mother, earthly mother of Jesus. But you don't know, and tonight I don't have time to tell you the challenges she went through to be a mother of Jesus. To be a young girl, uh, not married, and being pregnant with uh, Jesus. So when God bless us, he bless us so that the challenges of, ahead of us uh, will not be only challenges that is impossible for us to live above them or to, to have victory over them. God bless us so that we can rise above our challenges and bless people face many, many challenges. I can give you many, many more examples, but time is running out. So bless me. God bless me. And in asking God to bless him, Jabez left it entirely to God as how he should be blessed. Yes, there's a place to say, God, bless me with a car. But at the same time, tonight I'm not focusing on God blessing me with this, with that, with this, but I'm focusing on uh, just entirely on Jabez's prayer. You see, when you preach a message, you don't preach the whole Bible. You don't try and prove the other verses. Tonight, I just want you to trust God to bless you the way God sees fit. You may think you need blessing of this, blessing of that, but when you say, God bless me, God knows how to bless you more than all the things you can ask or think of. So I'm not suggesting at all that it is wrong to ask God to bless you um, with whatever you want to fill that up, uh, fill in the, the blanks with. Okay. I thought I'd share a testimony. Um, you know, about 35 years ago, I asked God to bless me with a house. We were, Pastor and I, we all, when we first came to Calvary Church, we were, uh, the church was this size, where the clock is, and we were living behind the church, uh, the parsonage. And it's a very nice parsonage. But ch the church was growing, and we need the space. And I had two small children, and uh, you can be sure, living behind the church is a 24-7, 24-7, uh, and there was no uh, privacy. But more than not having privacy, I was, uh, the church was growing and needed the space for office. Now it is used for other things. So one day I heard Dr. Cho preached a sermon uh, in church, his first time coming here, and I was sitting somewhere, I was well, not, not in the front row, I think I was sitting in the second row right here, I can still see it, and here he was preaching. And he was saying that uh, when in his early years, he was praying for a bicycle, uh, because he was walking everywhere to preach or to do evangelism. And he said he became pregnant with a bicycle. So I sat there and I said, oh, I want to be pregnant with a house uh, of, you know, where a past where we can stay. And in my imagination, in my mind, I asked God for a link house. 
I thought that would be very good already. And then I asked God for a corner link house because I said to him, um, our house, we have all, a lot of vis people coming in, sometimes church. At that time, we don't have counseling center. We are not so established. So people always come to our house for everything, whether counseling or just a fellowship or sometimes even meeting the pastor's house. So I said, I need a corner house. First of all, when the, if the children come home from school, they don't have to come through the main hall. Uh, very good reason. They don't have to come through the main hall and disturb and, and then uh, excuse me and go, 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 go into uh, their room and all that. I said, they can come by the, by the back, by the kitchen. Another thing is I love animals and I, I, I raise the children loving animals. So we want to have animals, link house, no, very hard to have animals. <clears throat> so anyway, but God in his goodness blessed me with a house. And instead of a link house, he gave me a single a bungalow house right nearby. We chose one very far away because it's cheaper, but I cannot give you all the details, no time. I can, if I tell you the full details of it, it will go till seven o'clock. But I'm still living in that house that God has blessed me with. So when we ask God to bless, God bless us exceeding abundantly more than we ask or even think. God is a God who wants wants to bless us. Then in, in saying God bless me, the second point is Jabez asked God to enlarge his territory. He said, God, all I ask is you bless me indeed. How you bless me, in what way you choose to bless me, you know best. And you are a God who bless abundantly, who bless us for our good, who sees the future. You are, I just trust you. Then he says, you know, God, I want you to enlarge my territory. See, he's uh, Jabez was not asking God for more real estate, more, no, more territory, more, more land, more what. He said, just in, in, you, you, when you bless me, I will be so blessed, and you will, you will so enlarge my territory that... Um, that what, huh? That, so that everything that you have given me, that you have put under my care, will grow, will enlarge. See, God is not a God of limitation. God is a God who always enlarges us. I don't know where you are today. I know where I am, and I, I, I know also how old I am. I know, <laughs> you know, uh, my, not my days are numbered, but my years are numbered. All of us have a certain number of years. I already passed the 70 mark. The Bible says 70 years, God bless you with that. If not 80, and some people beyond. So, but I know I, I'm not limited to just what I can do now. God still can enlarge me. So can God enlarge you. God can enlarge your influence. God can enlarge your business. God can enlarge your influence. God can enlarge your testimony. God is a God who will enlarge us. So the second thing, Jabez asked God for us to enlarge his territory. I want to, in other words, he says to God, God, I want, to I want you to maximize my potential. I want to excel in everything that you do for me. Uh, whether uh, it's you're asking God to enlarge your family, perhaps some young people here, some young married, may want to have more children, or perhaps not, nah, huh? today's... Today, everyone wants to have small family. But whatever you, may, you are wanting, God, God, you enlarge me, enlarge my family, enlarge my responsibility as a wife, enlarge my responsibility as a school teacher, enlarge me in the ministry that you have entrusted me, enlarge me in the profession, be it a doctor, be it a lawyer, be it a salesperson, be it a gardener, God, you enlarge me. And you favor me in all my um, key relationships that I will be blessed. Then the third point Jabez request was, he asked God's hand to be upon him. God, I want you to bless me, please. God, I want you to enlarge my territory. Everything you have for me, I want to claim it. I want to have it. I want to grow. Then he says, then when I become so large, 
and so influential or perhaps even so prosperous, whether it's in spiritual uh, realm or in the physical realm, then he says, God, you need to, I need your hand to be upon everything. Whether it's my children, whether it's the ministry you have entrusted me, whether it's the church, put your hand upon me. You know, we often sing a song, you say, so blessed that I cannot contain it. Hmm? So much, but yeah, so much I give it away. So as God enlarges us and blesses us, we are blessed. This morning I heard a testimony of one of our uh, speakers. She said, she, she asked, she prayed this prayer, uh, Jay Bess's prayer, but she said, I pray, bless me so that I can be a blessing. That, that is exactly what it is. When God enlarges you, it will be beyond your expectation and beyond what you can do with the material things. And I believe God enlarges us and God enlarges our, perhaps our um, finances, not to just keep it. And then, but I am a great believer that when God blesses a Christian, he blesses the Christian financially, I'm talking about, so that the work of God can go forward. The work of God, the kingdom of God is supported by his children. So he says, God, keep your hand upon your blessing. Keep your hand upon me. Because your blessing can be so huge, you are overwhelmed. And you may not stay um, trusting God, but you may instead trust on the blessings of God. Sufficient to make that statement without elaborating. So God, you keep your hand upon me. I will not stray. I will not forget you. Your hand will be upon me. You know, the hand of God in a biblical term is for God's power and God's presence in our life. Always. Always. Um, and also to be a testimony. In Joshua chapter 4, verse 24, I was going to ask somebody to read it. Pastor? Uh, yeah. Chewing, you, can you find very fast in your iPhone? Uh, <laughs> Joshua 4. <laughs> now I'm sure he's using his iPhone for scripture. Some of you using iPhone for many things in every congregation. Joshua chapter 4, verse 24. He did this so that all the peoples of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful and so that you might always fear the Lord your God. Yes. When God's hand is upon you, upon enlarging your territory, upon blessing you, it's so that people will know that it is God's hand upon your life. And it's not wow, how great you are, how smart you are, how, how intelligent you are, how working, hard working. All that is important. All that is given by God. But the most important is that they may see your good works in the New Testament, right? that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So, never let go of the hand of God. When God blesses us, let's always pray, God, keep your hand upon me. Another reason could be that when um, God blesses us in such abundant way, um, some people call it the evil eye. That's the point, point four. I'm coming to a close of my message. Jabez asked God to keep him from evil himself from evil and from evil coming upon him when we are so blessed that there will be people who may be jealous of us jealous that you are so favored you know i've heard people even in uh, in church sometimes we hear testimonies and oh they testify about how god has so blessed them oh god bless me with a bmw he hasn't blessed me with a I also don't want a BMW, okay? I'm not, I'm not a car person, so. But, and somebody else sits there and says, yeah, how come God bless him with a BMW? Huh? And only God bless me with a, a kanchil. <laughs> Until you thank God for the kanchil, you will not get your BMW, okay? When you get your kanchil and say, God, I thank you. I don't have to walk. I can have a car. At one of these days, you will soon have the car of your dream. Perhaps not BMW because something else. Huh? But at the same time, there will be people who feel, yeah, how come uh, this, this person always have good testimony? And me, 
nothing happens to me. Perhaps you need a thankful spirit and start looking at the blessings of God. The, perhaps it may be some little things that God has started doing for you and then God will enlarge it. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. And it will amaze you to see what God has done. Study it tonight. So he says, Jabez says, God, keep evil from me. Keep evil from me. You know when Jesus taught the disciples how to pray, we call it the Lord's Prayer. He taught the disciples to say, deliver us from evil. Yes, there's evil all around us. They are just around us. When God's hand is upon us, the blood of Jesus, Pastor has been preaching, when the blood of Jesus covers you, no evil can come nigh you. Every time I stay in a hotel, not me, our pastor together, when we are in a hotel room, the first thing when I enter into the hotel room, because it's not my house, I always plead the blood of Jesus. And I, I cast away any evil spirit that may be prior in that room. It's a good thing to always pray, keep us, deliver us from evil. Because it is Jesus who taught his disciples to pray, that deliver us from evil. Evil. Jesus himself prayed for all of us. In John chapter 17, verse 15, he says, Father, he was going back to heaven and he was praying for his disciples. He says, Father, keep them from evil. And every time you are threatened by evil and evil forces or evil people, remember Jesus has already prayed for you. And God answers his son's prayer. And Jesus prayed that he will keep us from evil. And every one of us tonight, if you are a child of God, we need not be threatened by evil, but we know God will keep us and deliver us from evil. So, four simple points from Jabez's prayer. One, things can start badly for you. Whether in your childhood, whether even today, in whatever project you may be uh, doing, or even your business or some situation, it may have seemed, or it may, be, it may be a bad beginning. It can start badly for you. Or you may be in a very difficult situation, a very challenging situation. Today, the word of God comes to us. The message comes to us through Jabez's prayer. We need not accept that kind of a circumstance. We need not dwell in that circumstance and say, I am doomed. This is hopeless. I tell you, the word hopeless should never be in the vocabulary of a believer. Because in Christ, there is no hopeless case. In Christ, there is no hopeless people. I get very upset. Uh, I, I sometimes I, I cannot show it lah, huh, in my spirit. When I hear parents or sometimes uh, people saying, you are hopeless, it upsets me a lot. Because nobody is hopeless. So will you take that word out of your vocabulary? Hopeless, hopeless. Hmm? So... We need, not challenge, uh, we need not accept that hopeless situation or that sickness that we have. I am still praying for God to heal me in some areas of my life, physically, emotionally, spiritually too. And I believe that as we pray, God will answer our prayer. Just as God granted Jabez his request, God will grant your request. Your circumstances can change and you will... Change your own destiny through your prayer to Almighty God, to a loving Heavenly Father. So at the end of the day, Jabez, who was called Pain, became more honorable than all his brothers. What a testimony. And that all the people around him, family members, community, recognize that the hand of God is upon this person 
who was born a pain but ended up more honorable. A mother's pain to a mother's pride. Jabez became. Instead of being a mother's pain, he became a mother's pride through his a son's prayer, his prayer. And Psalms 112 verse 2, I conclude, the generation of the upright which shall be blessed. So this evening, I can ask, ask all of you to come forward to pray Jabez's prayer. Because if I say, who wants to be blessed? Who wants to be blessed? Yes, everyone. So I won't give an altar call and say, all those who want to be blessed by God, come forward. I just want you to stand. And all together, by, in faith, believing. I don't know your circumstance. I don't know your situation. You may not be born a pain. All right? Um, my name is not pain. But I was born with... Many things that I felt I couldn't do until God called me into full-time ministry. I think it was in my, my book, The Glimpses of His Glory. When I was young in my family, I'm the sixth in my family. I am the, as far as daughters are concerned, I'm very weak, physically weak. My voice is so soft, I don't dare speak up. My father called me to say I have mosquito voice. But today my voice is so loud, at the back can hear. <laughs> It's because, not because of the Holy Spirit caused me to shout, but I became a school teacher. I became a mother first, you know, and then school teacher. I know you shouldn't shout, but I did shout. <laughs> One kindergarten child came home from kindergarten, and so somebody asked her, What did you learn in kindergarten today, your, your first day? Oh, she said, I learned that my teacher can shout louder than my mother. <laughs> So, so I, I, I'm talking about myself. I was physically weak. I was, uh, I had very low self-esteem. I hardly speak up. My voice is so, so soft. You know. And in school, my older sister, who's two years older than me, had to protect me uh, from people bullying me. But you see, that could have been my destiny. But I answered God's call. And today. This very sister who is two years older than me, there's nine in my family, so we cannot be close to all nine siblings. They are the older ones, they are the ones. This sister is closer to me because we went to school together and all, and she's the brave one, she's the successful one um, uh, in career and all. I mean, among all of us, some of them are good business people. But she is the one that declared not too long ago, a few years ago, she says, Patrina, you are the most influential and the most trustworthy of all of us yeah the blessed because whenever there is problem they call me especially when my mother was alive and there was any family problem they call me they not, it's not me they know that i can pray and my god can answer the prayer and so for somebody who's successful uh, in her career who declared that i am the most uh, significant of all the siblings is the mighty hand of God is upon my life. God can change your situation and your destiny today. Shall we pray? And take a moment to let God's word, word sink into your heart. Perhaps you are facing some challenges or it may be even people who can threaten your life your situation your job some there are some evil because of jealousy of your success perhaps it can be also your family members and siblings or it can be a sickness a disease whatever it is tonight let us pray and I want to pray with you this evening just in these four points Father I ask that as you have so 
clearly spoken to me that this is the message, this is the word for this congregation tonight, for everyone, for you knew who is coming to church this evening. And as much as I struggled to say that this message is already in the article, you impress upon me to share it because you know there are children of yours here who need to call out to you to bless, to bless. So tonight I ask for your blessing, your blessing to be upon every one of us who have heard your word and who is receiving your promise tonight. You are a God who blesses. We are born again to be blessed. And there's no curse that can hurt us. The people around us may curse us, but you will turn the cursing into blessing. You have shown this to us in your word. No weapon formed against us will prosper. No weapon at all. So I ask for your blessing to be upon every one of us. I also ask your father as your word so clearly declares that you did for Jabez and you will do for every one of us for you have no favourite. You will enlarge our territory, our influence, our testimony to the glory and honour of your name. So many of us, including myself, we have put limitations to what you want to do in and through our life, through our own fear. But in the name of Jesus this evening, all fear, all anxiety, in the name of Jesus, all fear and all anxiety, be gone in Jesus' name. Be gone in Jesus' name. We are set free tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And no evil come, can come nigh us. No evil can enter into our household. No evil can enter into what you have given and trusted to us. Be it ministry, be it profession, be it our children, be it our parents, be it our loved ones. And your precious hand, oh, your precious hand, your mighty hand, be upon us always in our going out and in our coming in, that the world will know that indeed you are our Father, Amen. you are our God, and great and mighty is the Lord our God. We thank you, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.